Hello, Facebook Live, CammieBaker.com here. We are getting ready to do another episode of The Happiness Jungle. Today, I am so excited to have Miss Susan Trotter, Miss Dr. Trotter, <laughs> in the house. And right now, we're just getting geared up to film the episode. So just killing a little bit of airtime with you, waiting for people to jump on and watch and be a part of the show. Okay, in seven, six. Bye. Hello and welcome to the Happiness Jungle. Cammie Baker here and I am your guest host today on the Happiness Jungle and I'm super excited to have another fabulous, fierce and on fire female mm -hmm. friend, Miss Susan Trotter, PhD. I have been doing a little online dating, a little dating in general mm -hmm. for the last six months or so. And at least two or three of my friends have said, oh, you need to talk to Susan. You need to talk to Susan. I'm like, I don't need to talk to anybody. <laughs> so we finally reached out and connected on Facebook. Right. I have decided that Facebook and social media, which I thought was the most antisocial form of connecting, can actually be a really social way when you use it properly, right. hence why we are here. Absolutely. So Susan, share with us a little bit about how did you become a PhD and how did you decide that your specialty would be helping people in relationships? Sure, thank you. Well, I'm thrilled to be here and so glad that we finally connected. So I was thinking about this actually on my way here. I, I decided when I was 15 years old that I was going to be a therapist. Mm. I had a um, teacher in home ec class back in the day, gives you an idea of how old I am. So in addition to learning how to pay uh, balanced uh, checkbooks and cook and sew, we did a six-week unit on psychology. And I'd always been the resident therapist growing up, the one everybody talked to. And I had this crystallizing moment that, oh, it's a whole field and I could make a career out of this. Hmm. So when I was 15, I decided to go into the field. Um, went on to major in psychology, went on to get my PhD, and practiced as a clinical psychologist and therapist for a very, very long time. Um, pretty traditional practice. Um, and then several years ago, shifted to coaching. And in part because of personal experiences and um, training and um, research that I had done, I developed some specialties, including divorce, dating and relationships, uh, self-esteem, mindset, and communication. And so I do a lot of different things, but a big part of my practice is around dating and relationship coaching. Well, I know that how you and I first got really introduced was through our friends at Vesta. Right. And uh, the, the people there that help with divorce. And what is it about divorce? What, what do you help people with through mm -hmm. the divorce process? Sure. So I've been involved with VESTA for three years. And for those that don't know, VESTA is a group of professionals that have come together from different fields to help people at all stages of divorce. And we do that through a variety of different events, through resources to provide education, to provide connection and empowerment for, for people so that they can have a different experience going through divorce than most of us have had. Mm. Um, most of the professionals, or many of them, have been divorced themselves and have not necessarily had the greatest experience going through the process. And so we're really passionate about helping people have a different experience and come through it in a way that helps them not just get through it, but thrive on the other side. You guys really are passionate about it mm -hmm. because I see the post a lot from Deanna, right. from, from Kat, from all the others that mm -hmm. are, you know, helping people through the process. And, and when I've interviewed, um, I, I interviewed um, Deanna, and right. then I'm going to have both of them on in about mm -hmm. a month. And I said, it would seem to be such a depressing kind of a field to be in. But they said, no, it's really uplifting. People right. are so grateful that they're helped through. And they're, you guys have, um, or they do, and that uh, real estate agent, financial mm -hmm. advisor, right. like all aspects of, right. of going through that whole process. That's right. Yeah, we have professionals, uh, attorneys, mediators, financial advisors, coaches, uh, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, stylists. Stylist, um, yeah. accountants we have we have all kinds of professionals and it is it's really empowering um, I, I feel so lucky to be doing work that I love that mm. I can earn a living from and make a difference it's I know it's like the perfect trifecta amen when it comes to work yeah I yep. love setting my own schedule doing my mm -hmm. own thing working with who I want when I want if right. I want right and right it's, it's just a beautiful thing so let's delve in sure let's delve into the to the, so you do workshops, you do individual one-on-one right. -on -one coaching. What is the biggest challenge that you see for people that are out now 
looking to find a new relationship, especially sure. at our beautiful age. Absolutely, right. So I work with people of all ages, but the majority of my clients are between, I'd say, 40 and 70. And many of them are divorced. Um, some have been widowed and some have never been married. What I find, what I hear from most people is that the dating world stinks, uh, that people are crazy, that they're all jerks, <laughs> that it's just awful out there. It's a crazy little world and they hate, they hate the whole process. And when I do, I do these two-hour dating workshops, um, and, and I often will start by saying, I've never had a bad first date. And it's not that I'm any more special than anybody else. It's that I've learned over time how to present myself and how to approach the process and how to really assess people mm. um, so that when I go out on a date with someone, I know that I'm going out with somebody who's a good quality person. Mm. May or may not be the right fit, for the long term, sure. but I know that I'm going to have a nice time, no matter what. And so what happens when people don't do the work up front and they just swipe and make a date right away and you don't really know who you're meeting and then you have a bad experience, you then come away from that experience feeling bad and feeling negative and being upset or angry or disappointed and you take that back into the process when you're looking for more people. And that impacts your experience. It impacts who you're going to be looking at or how you're going to look at people. I was a real estate agent for 15 years, and that makes me think of pre-qualifying the appointment before mm -hmm. you go. Right, you know, right. If you're going on an appointment and, and you're not getting the listing, it's because you didn't, you didn't qualify. Right. You didn't qualify to see if they were even ready to list. That's or right. if they, you know. Right. So there's a lot of pre-qualification that goes on. And, you know, over the last four years or so of me doing online dating and having relationships in between, um, I've had just some of the most fascinating encounters. You know, mm -hmm. I went out with a guy that was a, a MMA world champion, gone out with people that, you know, have written numerous big novels and books and, and screenplays for movies and mm -hmm. just all kinds of really fascinating, interesting people. So to your point, uh, if you're having a bad first date, it's because mm -hmm. you didn't pre-qualify. They don't all turn out to be a romantic Connection. Uh, connection. Right, right. But they're right. all fascinating. Right, yeah. Right. So, how do you think people should be pre qualifying a little bit better? Sure. So, one of the things I recommend, first of all, is that people do their own work before they put themselves out there. Amen. And, you know, it might take the form of therapy or coaching, it might be meditation, journaling, exercise. I mean, there's all kinds of things that people can do that qualifies as their own work. If they're putting their house on the market, That's they clean right. it first. Exactly. That's a perfect, <laughs> perfect metaphor. You Absolutely. Would, you wouldn't put your car on the market with the big bags of right. McDonald's in the back. Clean Ex that stuff out. Exactly. Exactly. Clean out so your garbage. People need to do their work to understand what works for them in past, what worked in past relationships, what didn't work, what was their part in their relationship, in the dynamic. We're not responsible for what other people do or, or how they behave, but we all have a part in every dynamic, no matter what the, the relationship is. And so it's really important to understand that. Understand and to, it and take responsibility and, for right, it. And and change things that actually don't serve you well in a relationship. Um, you know, the divorce rate goes up for second, third, and fourth marriages. And the reason is, is that people don't do their work. And history naturally tends to repeat itself when you don't work things through. And so that means people repeat patterns. And that's why, that's why the divorce rate, in part, goes up. Um, so, so first, I recommend that people do their own work. And then one of my theories when it comes to dating is that everything at the beginning is information that mm. people are giving you. And whether it's online or in real life, it's all information. If you're online, what is the photo? How, how are they presenting themselves in the photo? Are they looking in the camera and smiling or are they wearing sunglasses and looking in the distance? You know, my background is in psychology and therapy, so everything's interpretable to me. But the very first photo can give you a lot of information. And I, I did a Facebook Live about three months ago, how does online dating compare to marketing your business? Mm -hmm. And the photos are fascinating. Right. Why would somebody put a photo of a flower or mm -hmm. a dog or mm -hmm. a motorcycle or, God forbid, a photo from 28 years ago or mm -hmm. something? up? Right. As a, and, you know, if every photo, six, seven, eight photos, the person's not smiling in any mm -hmm. of the photos, mm -hmm. That right. tells you a lot, too. Absolutely. Like, uh, yeah, Absolutely. So, so, much so about everything. And so, you know, say the photo's okay, and you click, and you start reading the profile. And 
I'm assuming I'm talking more about websites, dating websites, as opposed to apps. And we can talk about the differences because I have opinions about that. Um, but if you click and you're reading a profile, pay attention to what they're saying. Um, is Do they have two lines in a profile summary or do they have mm -hmm. two pages? Because both are interpretable. You know, somebody who only has a little bit of information may just be dipping their toes in the water. They may not be quite ready or fully available for a relationship. Somebody who writes volumes may have some difficulty kind of containing themselves and, you know, in terms of boundaries. I mean, you know, we don't really know, but ideally a profile should be, a profile summary should be around two to 300 words. That's kind of the average and two thirds of it should be about you and one third about what you're looking for in somebody else. Mm. And when you're reading the profile, you want to look for consistency. You want to look for any red flags or what I call yellow flags. Um, red flags are usually a reason to keep clicking. Um, a yellow flag might be something that you're not sure about. You want to kind of tuck it away if everything else looks good and, and look for other things, more information to either alleviate the concern or make it more of a red flag down the road. And of course, you would tell people they should have a conversation. Absolutely. Or anytime somebody says to me, yeah, um, I can't video chat. I don't have computer. Mm -hmm. I don't have a camera. I'm like, Correct. no. What you don't have is you're not real. Yeah, like, right. I've been here, done that before. Mm -hmm. I, there's so many scams out there. Right. But, so. You do have to be careful. There's a lot of riffraff out there, and there are scams. And if somebody sounds too good to be true, they probably are, just like anything else in life. Well, I, it's um, interesting you bring that up, though, because people will say to me, well, you can't find anybody good online. And then I'll say, well, aren't you online? Well, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so what is that saying about you? Or right. they'll look at me and they'll say, well, why are you online? Almost to, mm. to insinuate that there's something wrong with you. More and more couples are meeting online. Yeah, it the is last such woman I had on here, she, right. I said something about it. She said, I met my husband online. Yeah. I said, I know, I meet a lot right. of people like that. Right, It's a great way to meet people that you wouldn't normally meet in your everyday life. And it's just one avenue. I also encourage people to get out there and do the things that you enjoy. Um, meet up is a great way to connect with people with shared interests. Um, you know, walk around the world with an openness about you that mm -hmm. invites people to connect. I talk to people everywhere I go. Um, the grocery store, the, the, you know, when I'm out running, I say hello. I mean, I just talk to people everywhere. It's not necessary to meet someone to date. I just, I like connecting with people. But when you're walking around the world with your phone in your hand looking down, or you're not smiling, mm -hmm. it keeps people out. If you present yourself in a more open way, you have more opportunity to meet people in real life as well. So what does this mean? I'm 50 years old, as of two weeks, a month ago. Oh, happy, happy belated birthday. Thank you. 50s are a great decade, by the way. They are. Every man I have ever gone out with, mm -hmm. and I, I just was watching a comedian last night. She was so funny. I can't remember her name. But she was talking about how women don't ask men out and how they, it just isn't proper and they don't do it and whatever. Every man I've ever gone out with, I have asked out. Mm -hmm. Whether it was online and I was the first one to reach out. Yep or whether it was somebody that I knew f at, from through work and I mm -hmm. asked them out or whatever, I've always been an instigator. Mm -hmm. what, and some people would say, well, it's because you're, you intimidate mm. men. I don't know, but mm. I'm always the one that asks them out. Why mm. is that? Um, well, I love that you are not hesitant to ask people out. I encourage people to, especially those that are more traditional, to step out of their comfort zone. Um, you know, women sometimes are waiting to be asked, and I really love when women take take the opportunity to reach out and say, tell somebody that, hey, I, I like what you said and would love to connect. Um, I, I don't know what it means exactly, except I think it's great. And it suggests that the men that you're um, connecting with, who you end up in a relation, relationship with, must like that you're independent and strong as a woman and that you're not afraid to step out of a traditional role, typically t more traditional role. I had another friend that w was wanting to do some online dating a couple years ago, and she says, well, I'm not going to reach out because if they, if they can't step up and ask me out, I'm not going to chase them, and I'm mm. not going to look desperate. And it just kind of like what you said. It's about working on your mindset right. and how you feel. Right. Because I don't feel that way at all. I don't feel right. like I'm chasing or desperate. I feel like I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. you're out here, I'm out here. Right. Hello. Absolutely. I, I remember when I first started doing online dating or any dating, um, I've always been instant girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So I would meet somebody and we'd be together for five years. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and it was usually somebody that I either I worked with, met through real estate, through other businesses or whatever. 
And then about four years ago, I had been torturing this friend of mine who's been doing online dating for like 15 years. And I would say to him, why don't you just go out and meet people? Like, what's mm-hmm. wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Why are you so, you know, why are you such a closet person? Mm-hmm. Just go meet people. Right. But then I realized with the online dating, okay, I need to know, is a man single or married? Mm-hmm. I need to know, are you gay or are you straight? And I need to know, do you find me attractive? Mm-hmm. Because if I can get all those out of the way... I'll ask them out, mm-hmm. but you know, typically, let's say I'm out, you know, at a networking event, right. and I see a nice-looking man. Where I'm, Excuse me, <laughs> I don't see any ring. Are you single? Right. Oh, you're single. Right. Okay, are you straight? Mm-hmm. Oh, you are. Do you find me attractive? <laughs> right. You can't really do those things in real life, can you? <laughs> <laughs> but with online, it kind right. of just gets all right. that right out there. It does. So. It but, absolutely does. Yeah. Um, so one of the other things, too, is, you know, just uh, referencing your friend. What you put out there is what you get back. If you feel good about yourself and you feel like you bring a lot to the table, you're much more likely to attract people who are going to reflect that back to you and who mm. also are going to bring something to the table. True that. Yes, absolutely. Um, And the other thing is that it's not that personal at the beginning. It feels personal, Mm. but the online dating world is a very fluid, fluid world. You know, everybody's just connecting and emailing and reaching out and just in some ways kind of, I mean, hopefully they're reading your profile and doing it with some intention. But, But a lot of people are just trying to connect and see what sticks. And it's really not that personal. And if you can remember that, it makes it much easier to, to take the risk and put yourself out there. You know, if you email someone and they don't respond, just move on. There is a very interesting level of um, insinuated intimacy mm-hmm. right. right off the bat. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that is, but, but it's definitely there and it's definitely something to be, be yeah, aware of. Absolutely. And, and so, so you talked about other ways. So let's get off online and on to actually meeting mm-hmm. people the good old-fashioned mm-hmm. way. What about speed dating, mm-hmm. um, singles dances, mm-hmm. all that kind of yeah. stuff? Do, do you so, do any of those? So I, I don't run any of those uh, yet. Um, they're all just other opportunities to meet people. And again, I think when you are in a good place with yourself, when you've done your work, if you're open to possibility and you're really ready for relationships, it doesn't matter where you are, whether it's speed dating, singles, it's going to the grocery store or online. Uh, there, there are always opportunities to meet somebody. So, you know, if you want to do speed dating, go, go do it. Have fun with it. Yeah. So you do all kinds of uh, two-hour workshops. Different. Right. Who's a perfect client for you? I, I know you mentioned between 40 and mm-hmm. 70, but be a right. more specific. Like, so, who resonates with you? Yeah, so I, I do work primarily with people who have been divorced. And divorcing after 20, sometimes 30, 40-year marriage is really, uh, dating after a 30, 40 year marriage is, is really different than dating in your twenties and thirties. You're looking for different things. You're in a different place. Um, you know, for a lot of people, um, you know, their, their sex life has diminished over the course of their marriage. And so now they're, you know, needing to kind of reconnect with themselves in that way. Um, bodies have changed. So it's, there are a lot of different issues for people at, at midlife who are just getting back out there into the dating world. They haven't dated since they were, you know, 20, some of them. And it's a really different experience. Very different. One of the things I do like about it, though, is it seems like when we're younger, when we're in our teens or 20s, especially before the Internet and everything, way back in our day, yes. back when we were climbing the hill to go yes. to school, um, exactly. you, you basically went out with whoever was in your hometown. Right. You know, you went out with the high school mm-hmm football guy or whatever and now you like you said on online you can really broaden your range right. but but also with being older you we know what we like we know mm-hmm. what we don't like it's right. we can be instead of just being stuck with the person that was our first date yeah now it's like okay well there's a lot of stuff to look at mm-hmm. it's, I think about it as taking a ta- taste it's kind of like going to the to the ice cream right. parlor and there's and 85 flavors <laughs> <laughs> mm, no yeah Right. So that that's a danger, actually, with online dating, right? Because you can always, like, click. There's always somebody else. And mm-hmm. so... It's just like it's, in real estate. Once you right. pick the house, get off of Realtor.com because right. there's always a better house coming. Right. Exactly. exactly. I love all those real estate metaphors. I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to borrow some of those. Um, absolutely. I mean, you know, dating requires this kind of sweet spot of being really open and being flexible and at the same time, knowing what you want, you know, what are, what are kind of your deal breakers? And one of, the, one of the most important things I encourage, I encourage people to think about is what are their values? Shared values mm-hmm. is a really important thing. 
much more important than how tall somebody is or you know what job they have. Making sure that your values are aligned predicts a lot of success for relationships. Well, I'm not really big on politics. There's mm-hmm. three things that bore the crap out of me. It's religion, politics, and sports. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did find out that you need to know what somebody's political mm-hmm. affiliation is because mm-hmm. yeah. well, when the, you find out when it's too late, it's like, oh, yeah. I'm going to well, live with that. That's not surprisingly become a, more, um, a bigger issue in the last couple of years as things have progressed. So, Aren't we both so politically um, <laughs> correct? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, one of the other things that's really important, whether you're dating online or real, in real life, as I said earlier, everything is information at the beginning. The other really important piece to remember is that it's you can't get too far ahead of yourself. Mm. A lot of people go into a first date wondering, is this my soulmate? Is this my one? How will they get along with my kids? You know, how, what do they think their retirement looks like? It's all these really big life questions that put way too much pressure mm. on a first, second, third date. So what I encourage people to do at every step of the way is just assess, you know, when you're looking at a profile, for example, do I, is there enough here that I like? Is there enough of a potentially good fit that I want to email them. And then you email them. Is there enough of a good communication and connection that I want to continue that? And then the phone call, and then the first date. And I say the only question at the end of a first date is whether or not you might want to have a second date. And that's it. Mm. And the second date, you're just thinking about whether the third date, whether there's enough of a good fit to want to have the next, take the next step. And it takes a lot of the pressure off. And I encourage people to just really pay attention to what people not just say, but how they behave. I remember I went out on a first date about three months ago, and um, and I I said uh, I said what what kind of questions are you are you wanting to get answered? I don't know. We had been texting mm-hmm. a little bit, and I don't remember what he said, but I said uh, I said what I'm looking for on our first day. I want to see how you treat the people around us. Mm-hmm. I want to see right. how, how what your body language is with the wait staff. Mm-hmm. at the restaurant you know mm-hmm. are you respectful and polite right. you know like Absolutely. all these all these things that you can't pick up in a text or from right. your profile because mm-hmm. all that stuff says a lot about somebody right. and when people talk about stalking someone online you you really need to look online and mm-hmm. see because I, I i know i've seen uh, you know people's on people's facebook things that they've written that were a little negative right like i'm glass half full like mm-hmm. let's fill that glass up baby right. let's you know and when I read something that's like negative, mm-hmm. they can be the most beautiful person, best right. job, fancy car, the whole deal. But it's like, right, mm, it makes you question. If you would write that, where's your head? Right, where's right. Where's that head at? Right. And I do actually recommend that people do a Google search before you go on a first date. It means asking for their full name um, and giving yours and, you know, not, not, searching for 20, you know, 20 or 100 pages, but just check the first couple pages. Um, you know know what, who you're going out with. You know what I find so creepy? When you text someone, let's say you just know the person's first name, Bob, but when you text them, once your phone has that phone number, Facebook will, will connect mm-hmm. you, will say, this is a connection you should connect with. Mm-hmm. Now you know it's Robert Smith. And you know, it's like, whoa. Right. right. Whoa. Yeah, I know. I know. There's it's, all it's, that big brother kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 There's not a lot of privacy in the online world anymore. So in the, our last few minutes, talk mm-hmm. about what someone can do. When you talk about doing the inner work, mm-hmm. what are some things that, that a person watching right now that who's in that position can sure. do to start getting themselves really like, am I really ready for this? Am I, right. am I grounded? Do I feel mm-hmm. confident? Right. Well, one of the things I, I certainly recommend is that people take some time to be by themselves for a little while. Um, people often will jump into relationships as a way to kind of avoid some of the discomfort that comes with the end of a relationship or the end of a marriage or just out of boredom. Rebound. Right, rebound. Yep, that can happen. Um, So I do encourage people to take some time to just be by themselves for a little while and reconnect with who they are uh, as a person outside of a relationship. And then doing some work uh, with a professional, ideally, to really understand their relationship history. And again, what worked and didn't what their part was, and to address any of the, the issues that were problems in their past relationships so that they don't repeat those patterns mm. going forward and that they, so that they can have a better experience in future relationships. Do you have a book? Have you written a book? I have not, but I have several in my head. 
And I, it's funny, I have clients who I work with around dating and they go out and, you know, they say that I'm, I'm in their head, I'm on their dates. I'm on a lot of dates, apparently, in people's heads. Um, and, you know, they'll say to themselves, Susan says, or, you know, what would Susan say? So I was thinking, what would Susan say might be the, the name That's of awesome. one of my books. I was on a coaching call with one of my clients, Tammy Downing, yesterday, and she said she was thinking of something. You know, what, what would Jesus do? Is what, so she said she was thinking, not what would Jay do? What would C do? What would Cammie do <laughs> uh-huh, in this situation right, about, right. about networking and connecting right, with somebody exactly. in a business situation? What would Susan do? <laughs> right. I love that. Right. I know. I know. Yeah. So I think that's, that's my, that might be my first book. Yeah. I, I have several in my head, though. Um, well, you can always do it the way that I did it. Mm-hmm. Out, put your outline down of all your chat. We'll talk about it. Okay. And, and you can video them. For, so you make mm-hmm. video. Oh, that's a great idea. So, so each chapter, you just get in front of a camera and you video, mm-hmm. video, video, and then have it transcribed. Right. And give right. the transcription to an editor and you'll have oh, a book in great. two months. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So my, my goal um, in working with people, dating can be fun. And ideally, I want people to have fun with it and find happiness and success with it. And it is very possible, but it's really important to do that work and to kind of check your mindset about dating and about relationships and the whole process, Mm -hmm. and then really learn the steps to to present yourself well and to assess other people really well so that you can make good choices and find good quality people to go out with. Now, are you married? I am not, but I'm in a relationship now with somebody I met online. Really? Yep. Yet another success story from online. Right. Imagine that. Right. Well, are there any other last couple of tidbits here in our mm-hmm. last minute together? Sure. Um, so one of the things I also really encourage people, um, it, it's okay when, when you're online, um, you may not like everybody who reaches out to you. Um, I'm really big. I, I feel like I'm, we're all too old to play games. And so if somebody reaches out to you and you're not interested, I get this question a lot. How do I handle this? People don't know how to say no. Um, if somebody reaches out to you and they write you a thoughtful email, um, that it's just respectful to, to respond and just say thanks. I don't think we're quite the right fit, but I wish you well in the process. Mm-hmm. And you can do that after a first date as well. Um, it's funny how we revert the back text. to adolescent our adolescent minds when we start dating again midlife. Yeah. Um, but I really encourage people to just be upfront about who they are. Um, it's important to start with honesty, um, whether you're online or in real life. Um, and have fun with it, because dating, dating is fun. Well, there you have it. Dating is fun. Exactly. What would Susan do? <laughs> what would Susan do? So, Thank Cammie you. Baker and Susan here on The Happiness Jungle telling you to be happy. It is a jungle out there. <laughs>